Okay, so once again, thank you everybody for attending today's webinar. Today, we're going to be running through a presentation that introduces you, one, to the concepts of what CRM, or Customer Relationship Management, is, and then specifically what CRM offerings that Aptivo has and how you can adopt them in your business. So to begin, let's spend a quick moment and talk about what is Aptivo. So you'll see notice right in the middle, we see the word CRM. Now, Aptivo is a suite of business management applications. We have all these different apps that handle different areas of business, which CRM is one of them. But then there's also many other apps, such as project management. We have some human resources utilities. You can manage your product database, your supplier database. We have invoicing and quotations. Lots of other different business apps to help you out. But for the focus of today's presentation, we're going to be talking about CRM and how everything builds around the CRM and what the different components of a CRM system are. So. Customer relationship management. Um, really at a high level what it is, it's a system that allows you to track all the different interactions with each of your customers and potential customers. This includes everything like um, tracking emails with them, setting reminders, seeing when there's new deals on the table, and also support operations as well. So if we take a look at CRM and we break it into three high level categories, it's these three right here. Contact management is the core concept of just having one central online database where each one of you can go in. You can take down the details of each person and organization that you interact with, whatever their relationship is, whether it's a vendor or a customer or a new prospect or even personal contacts. It allows you to put all this information in there, track everybody's phone numbers, addresses, any sort of data points that you want, and then also track all of your transactions or your communications with them when you're calling them or meeting them face to face as well as setting reminders in the future. So if you want to call somebody every year on their birthday, that would be perfect for the contact management portion. Everything inside of the platform builds around this contact management functionality. So I mentioned some other modules like invoicing, for example. Even somebody who uses an invoicing module is gonna need contact management to some extent because you have to know, well, who is the person that I'm sending this invoice to? What is the name of their business? Where is the location of their business so I can print it onto the invoice? So you can start to get the idea how really not only just the CRM apps as they're typically seen as, but every business application builds around the top of CRM, but in particular, contact management. Now, contacts, um, these are what we call our reference objects, meaning everything you do day to day is related to some contact. I'm doing a deal with this contact. I sent a quote to them. I'm running a project for them. I have some activities I have to complete for them and I need to build them. It's all in the context of this person. Salesforce automation is specifically focusing down on the part of your process from when you initially establish a relationship with a contact or when you first uh, become aware of them or their business and taking them through the process of identifying whether your services or products are right for them, going through, meeting the correct people in their organization, proposing the value for them, giving them a quote if needed, and then finally getting them to agree to move forward on that deal. All of these interactions from the very first point of contact to when they agree and they become an official customer, that falls under the scope of Salesforce automation. There's two big apps in play here, which are leads and opportunities, and we're definitely gonna spend a minute talking about them. But in general, Salesforce automation allows you to track potential deals from the initiation to closure. The last main component of CRM, which we're gonna spend a little less time focusing on today, is the customer support aspect. And you might have heard the term help desk or ticket system, support system. All of these are kind of the same. They are handled by one application inside of Aptivo called our Cases app. And this is after you close a deal and you deliver your products or service to a customer. Potentially they have problems or inquiries and you need to be able to intake these inquiries, ensure that they are assigned to the proper person and that they're resolved in a timely manner to keep your customers happy and then get them coming back to give you more sales deals. So those three kind of make up the core of CRM. Lots of little details here and there, but let's go ahead and let's take a deeper look at what are some of these key terms? Like, okay, what is involved in a sale? What is a contact? What is a customer? So we can start to get some context for everything. So let's start off with what we said is the core of everything, contacts. A contact is always an individual person. A customer, depending on your type of business, could be a person or it could be an organization or it could be a business. So if you're in a B2B company, it's pretty clear. A contact is an individual person. You are gonna be working with one or many contacts at a single company. And then the customer represents the business itself. 
So that way you'll have a list of your customers. You can see each person who works for that customer. And then you might be doing deals with just one main contact at that organization, or you could even have deals going on with multiple contacts at a single organization. Definitely dep depends on the size of the customer account and the size of your company as well. But the idea is that every entity that you interact with, it's either a contact or a customer. If you're in a B2C company, it's a little more complex because there's not always a business involved. Uh, there's no organization there. So in that case, the customer represents the buying party. So let's say that you're in the real estate industry and you buy and sell real estate. So sometimes you interact with an individual. So let's say me, um, Todd Miner. I could be in there as Todd Miner as a customer because there's nobody else involved. So you're just working with Todd Miner. But then you also might be working with my wife, Charlene. So in that case, you'd have a customer, and you'd want to call it something that represents all of us. So we could have a customer called the Miner family, and then there'd be one contact for Todd Miner, one contact for Charlene Miner. So it's totally up to you as far as how you want to structure this in your business, but the way to look at it is the customer should represent the entire buying party. It should be some way to describe all the individual contacts that you'll work with in order to close that deal. So those are contacts and customers, and as we mentioned, these are what we call reference objects. So everything you do in Aptivo is going to be related to a contact and or a customer. And this kind of goes into our next section, which is we'll talk about deals. So you've got these potential sales. It's where business begins, whether they're coming in from your website and contacting you that way. Maybe they called your phone line that they found um, through some online source, or maybe they're coming through a referral. Maybe you even bought a list of local new businesses and you want to proactively reach out to them and run a marketing campaign. All of these represent potential new deals for your company, but they're definitely in different stages because you can have um, an existing customer who's been doing business with you for five years who calls you up and then they want to talk about a new deal, or you can have this person that you've never heard of before that calls you up, and for all you know, they're just they're trying to cold call you and sell you something. So we actually give you two different applications to help you track sales, and these are leads and opportunities. Before we get into what the difference between a lead and opportunity is, let's just kind of take the high-level breakdown, which is both of these are what make up your sales process. So the whole sales process is like we mentioned from the very initial points of when you sorry, put them into the system all the way to closing the deal. So there's like a very standard type um, flow of stages in your sales process. So this is from the initial input to deal finishing. But like we said, this is broken into two different stages. So what the Salesforce automation apps are designed to do is help you intelligently spend your time on the right deals because not every deal is made equal. Some of these are going to be worth more to your company because of the size of the deal or because of the likelihood that it is to close. So what we do is we encourage you to come up with a conversion process of deciding, okay, well, what steps do I run through in order to go from this initial, I just have a name and a phone number to getting them to buy and at what point do they become exceptionally likely to actually close? So every company is completely different here. We're going to run through just like one quick example, but definitely just keep in mind that you should put some thought into this and really do what's right for your business process. And this example, what we've done is we've taken the first three stages, which is basically getting to the point of getting all their contact information, knowing what product they're interested in, and then setting up a time to meet with them. Setting up a meeting is a very common point that people will consider for conversion. Um, a lot of businesses are dependent around getting that face-to-face -face relationship going or getting on a phone call. Every company is different, but certainly this is one of the ways that you could do it. So the example would be if somebody contacts you through your website or if you buy a list of businesses, you would go through the list, you would call them or email them, you'd reach out, establish that, that relationship, get some further information, and then attempt to set up the meeting. Upon accomplishing that, we move into the next stage, which would be an opportunity. Now, the way that the sales process works is you're going to have all this lead uh, information, like the phone number and the address and the product that they want. And the idea is that you're able to convert this lead to the next stage, so it copies every detail that you put into stage one and then puts it into the later stage. So as far as what an opportunity is, it's a qualified sales lead. The one little kind of common piece of information to give you here is if a new customer comes in, they contact you through your website or they give you a phone call, it's considered a lead because you don't have a relationship. It's unqualified. But then there's other scenarios where, let's say, some existing customer comes to you 
and they just call you up and say, hey, I want a quote. You've already done business. You don't have to sell yourself to them. So this actually can start at the opportunity stage. So definitely not everything begins at the lead stage. Um, it's just once you have a real deal on the table, we can consider it an opportunity. The functionality between the two, as far as like tracking your emails out to them and your phone calls and setting reminders for the next follow-up, it's almost identical between the leads and opportunities apps. It's simply a way for you to differentiate between the deals that matter more to your company at this time. Okay, so that's just on the sales process. Let's take one more step back up to a high level before we actually dive into the app. And that's to think about, well, where does the sales process fit into your overall end-to-end -end business process? Because really when it comes down to it, that's what Aptivo excels at, is going beyond just the CRM. So in the beginning, okay, you take a lead, you follow up with them, maybe you leverage our mobile application. We have a great mobile CRM app for iOS and Android. And then you create opportunities, and we're tracking the success of these. But then we have many other applications. So from the opportunity, you might want to give a formal quotation to the customer. We have an app called Estimates in the Financials category. It allows us to convert that opportunity to an estimate, put in any sort of details, discounting that we want, and we can actually email that estimate out to the customer. When they accept that, you can launch a project, you could create a work order, you could create a sales order, depending on whether you're selling products or services or how your business works. And then at the very end, you can invoice your customer. But where this comes back to the CRM is those contacts and customers we talked about initially, all this information is present there. So one of the powerful things about our CRM is not just being able to track sales, but being able to track the complete history of interactions with every person that you work with. So when you bring up a customer in Aptivo, you're going to be able to see every past piece of communication. You're going to be able to see all their basic details like address and contact info. You're also going to be able to see a history of their deals, a history of quotes, any projects that are in progress for them, and a history of their billing. Every app that you can use in Aptivo integrates right back into the CRM to give you that full 360 degree view. And as far as some common features inside of here, you know what? This stuff is boring. Let's just go ahead and let's get into the app itself and let's show you there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log into Aptivo.com and I'm going to show you around the interface. So we'll get into my sample company here. I've got Kenny Clark who is at Glocial Tech. This is like kind of a Sample IT business, um, generally configured for anything, but we'll just walk through and show you some examples here. Okay, so with the CRM, I mean, we're definitely going to keep the kind of focus in on there. A huge, huge part of CRM systems is helping you stay on top of every follow-up, making sure you're calling people on their birthday. And if you promise somebody an update on a deal tomorrow or if you're going to revise a quote, making sure that all of these different commitments are put into place and put into one nice central area where you can log in in the morning and just figure out exactly what you need to accomplish that day. So that's what this agenda right here is. Basically, Aptivo is made up of a set of common features that we call collaboration. And these are what help you track the activities. So any sort of um, meeting event that goes onto your calendar, sales follow-ups, um, and also your tasks that you have to work on. It also helps you track communication, so there's an area to log phone calls, place to send emails, and there's an area to store notes and files. The idea is the central collaboration features, they're available across every app in Aptivo, so you can add um, a calendar appointment onto a sales opportunity, you can also add a calendar appointment onto, let's say, an invoice, for example, but you have one place to look where you get to go and see all these different reminders. But these reminders are put into the context of your different opportunities and deals that you're working with. So the idea is if I click on one of these, I can see there's a follow-up. I've got to ask them about their proposal. But then you might ask, what proposal? What did I write on there? I don't quite remember. In the old way, you'd have to bring up your email. You'd have to go find this person right here, go look them up, check through your sent folder, and go grab that file you sent to them. But in Aptivo, it's all about connecting that business data. So, okay, I've got a follow-up in my reminder. I should be able to click on it, and it should take me to where the information is that's relevant to that. So I had to follow up about a proposal that I'd sent from this opportunity. The idea is if I wanted to check out any sort of information, I should be able to see everything right here, like the, quote, the price I quoted to them, all that. If I want to see if I've logged any phone calls or if I've sent any emails to them, everything's visible right here. Although you might have noticed I just clicked on two, and there's actually no data at all. So if I wanted to just see, well, what was the last thing I did on this opportunity? I can actually click here to this great little newsfeed feature. 
the idea is that this quickly shows you every event that has occurred inside of the system. So this all just happens automatically as you're doing your day-to-day -day work. And that way, if I ever have a question of what was the last thing I did here, I come to this news feed. And it'll show me all of the different updates. So I can see in the very beginning that Frank, my colleague, had converted this lead, this uh, opportunity from an existing lead. Then myself, Kenny, I came in here, I scheduled that follow-up that we clicked on a moment ago. There's also a task there, and it looks like there was a second follow-up and a note. So using this information, I should know exactly what other details are in here. I can see, okay, I wrote up the proposal, but I expect the pushback on price. And so maybe I just need to give them a phone call. I can anticipate that they're going to be pushing back on the price, and I can log that phone call right here. So the idea is just the way that the system is structured, it's supposed to just flow easily from one stage to the next. You have something on your calendar that says, hey, I need to do that. I'm going to need information in order to complete that activity. So that calendar should lead you to the location in our system that has all the information you need to complete that activity. Then to actually take action, so maybe I'm going to email them as a follow-up instead of calling them, I should be able to perform that action from inside of the CRM as well. So really just being able to keep everything from within this one interface, make it very quick. So let's just go ahead and send that email follow-up to them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have templates in this app. So you'll notice everything's kind of wired in with the contact database. Um, the reason this didn't pre-select one is this particular opportunity. I actually had no customer on there, so we can link one up there. And the idea is that everything will build on top of that. So if I had an email in the CRM for that customer account, you'll notice it instantly pops up when I emailed them. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a deeper look at some of these common features, because we definitely want to break down kind of the standard structure. One thing I want to point out here is, although we have a ton of different applications, they're all designed to be very similar to each other. So I'm showing you that there's an email feature right here on the sales opportunity. I can log a sales call. So I can log my communication. Um, we have the reminder systems up here. So if I wanted to set another reminder to call them a little bit later on, I can go use like the follow-ups feature or I can go to the calendar. Um, but these features are actually available in every single application. So just take note that we're viewing a sales opportunity. We're in the opportunities app. And when we're viewing it, we have this overview tab. It has the information about the deal, like the stage it's in, the likelihood it is to close, what type of deal it is for us. But then let's go ahead and let's take a look at a customer. So I'm going to switch over to the customers app. This is that main customer database you have. And we'll go bring up this Maxilon customer who has a little bit of historical info. So Maxilon on the overview tab has a similar setup of a, just a bunch of fields, but it's actually different information. This information you store about each record is 100% customizable. So one is a lot of companies, you're looking for just a very simple solution. You don't want your employees to be bogged down with all these different fields to enter because otherwise then you're afraid they're, they're not going to use the system. So one of the big things that people will come in and they'll do is they'll go through and they'll remove all the fields that they don't need and really just break down the application so it contains nothing except what brings value to their process. Doing these sorts of changes is actually incredibly easy. It can be done by anybody without any sort of technical skill. And you can do it once, and it changes it for the entire company. So let's just say, for example, I've got this big description field, but I'm never going to use it. Instead, I've got my individual fields down here to track every detail I want. So I can see what type of building they're in, who their internet service provider is. And you'll take note that these are obviously not included in the default system when you sign up for AppTivo. All this is available through a great feature called Customize App. So let's go ahead and let's show you this real fast, because each one of our apps is highly configurable. So part, a big part of your CRM setup is going to be going into the settings area of each of those CRM apps. So to get to that, I look up next to the search field up here. You can hop into the settings. And there's a bunch of settings we have for each one of these applications. The biggest one is definitely this customized app right here. This is what allows us to control the different fields. And this is a nice drag and drop editor. So I'd have two options. Let's say if I'm not using description very often, maybe I just want to move it all the way down onto the bottom, so like buried away in this additional information section down here. Or maybe I did want to just remove it entirely. In that case, okay, just hit the delete button, simplify that. And maybe I want to clear up another couple that I'm not using. So maybe I just I don't care about annual revenue or ticker symbol. They're just not relevant to my type of company. So you can go through, we can rearrange stuff. 
Um, you can click on these and you can name them any sort of different item. So you have full control over each one of these different fields and you can create your own fields as well. So this technical details section we see here, I actually created a two column section called technical details. And then from this list in the middle, I was able to drag over drop down menus and radio buttons and everything to create these different values. So we have date pickers, you can do a drop down menu, you can do an address field, you can do a big text box, you can do a link to a web page. You just drag in the proper field type, and then all that is immediately available when looking through a list of your customers. So all those fields, they're stored on this overview tab right here. This is just like your general database. So just think of this as your spreadsheet on steroids, available in the cloud, accessible to anybody. That's what we're looking at right here. But then we have all of the other related information for them. So just like we were looking at before, we clicked on like that follow-ups tab. The idea is that these tabs up here, they're what matched that main homepage when we first came in. So we had that agenda, we had like a calendar when we first logged in. The idea is that these are just filtered down to only show the reminders and tasks and activities relevant to this particular customer. So as far as the general flow that you're going to be using in Aptivo day to day is when you are scheduling your next task, you're going to be looking at a particular record. So I'm working on a sales opportunity and I, I have to insert a task to write up a proposal for them. And I have to have that task done by Thursday because I promised a proposal to them by then. I also might have this customer. Um, maybe I noticed something about their account that was a little amiss. Like maybe I saw some of their contact information. I thought it might have been out of date. So I just want to put in a follow-up to give them a call tomorrow and just double check that everything's in order. The idea is that right from here, I can go ahead, I can go create that follow-up. Take a little note for myself. Um, we can set a little pop-up reminder. So even if I uh, put like the window minimize and all that, you'll get a little desktop alert in the bottom right corner. And the idea is that I schedule it from right here. Yes, it'll pop up in the follow-up list for Maxilon. But tomorrow when I log in, I shouldn't have to go look at each customer to figure out what I have to do. Instead, the way it works is the first thing you see when you log in, it's your agenda right here. I can see I have the follow-up on Maxilon, and then, well, I, I need to know what their phone number is to call them, and I also need to be able to judge what, like, uh, why their phone number is wrong. So it takes me right back into that customer we were at a moment ago, see their phone number is right here, can make changes if I need, and then this is where I could go. So I'm going to take action on the follow-up. I'm going to give them a phone call, so I can log that phone call here. take some notes, say who attended and all that. I'll just leave it empty to leave this a little bit quicker. And then I could also put my next activity. So possibly we solved everything. There's no real next action. I could just move on. Or maybe I go put in a note. So maybe we did have to update their phone number. So I can put in a general note, and you'll notice when I stick that in there, it's timestamped. It'll show who completed it. So all of your colleagues can come in here and see who's added which note onto each account. And then I could go in and, okay, well, I need to up delete that fax number, as I said. So I can go make that adjustment. That's kind of like one of those real-life scenarios that you might run through that um, just leverages the common kind of reminders features inside of Aptivo. So let's just quickly run through each one of these tabs and explain what they're used for, um, just so you have a nice, clear picture on everything. So on the overview, stores all the fields. You're going to notice there's a loyalty app in the customers app. Um, each app is going to have like one or two tabs that are unique to that app. I'm not going to spend any time talking about the loyalty management system, but it's heavily integrated with the CRM. One of the other examples you're going to see is when we look at a sales opportunity, there's an interface with your main product database. So during the sales process, I can track the standard like products or service packages that I'm offering. And then when I move on to like a quote or something, it'll copy over all the details I had in my opportunity. But then starting with the 360 tab, we have our common features. So from the 360 over, you're going to find these features in every single one of the applications that you go across. And they're all going to work the same across each application. 360 and Newsfeed are really awesome, but I am going to leave them for last because they're that good. So let's just quickly run through these right here. Um, the first three tabs, calendar, follow-ups, tasks, the three of these make up every type of reminder that you might set into the system. So whenever you have a pending action that needs to be taken in the future, you should create an event on the calendar, a follow-up, or a task. 
They all re represent different types of reminders, though. An event and a follow-up are both reminders to communicate or meet with somebody. The difference is whether there's a time of day or not. An event on the calendar has a specific time of day. So like today's presentation, that's an event on the calendar because it can't be moved. It's set at a sp certain time. But the concept of calling somebody because I tried to call them yesterday and they didn't pick up, that would be a follow-up because a follow-up doesn't have a particular time of day. It's just something you need to accomplish whenever you have available time. So the idea is that you would prioritize your events on the calendar over any follow-ups inside of this calendar. The last chunk is your tasks. This is kind of your internal work list. Anything that you have to work on that's not directly customer facing usually involves some sort of deliverable. And when you input a task, you can do things such as prioritizing them or categorizing them into different groups. They also can have a start time and an end time and all that. So between those three, that's every type of reminder you have to see. And all of them, um, they aggregate back up to the main agenda. So just to kind of point out, when you first logged in, there was the agenda here. What it does is it shows tasks on the right panel, your calendar events are in the middle, and your follow-ups are in the top row of this. You're going to see individual views, so I can filter for only the calendar or only my task list. These have some advantages, like when I'm trying to search for, let's say, a certain category of tasks, I might come here and do it. But your go-to spot is you log in, you go to your agenda, and it should show you every reminder that you have to do. Okay, so we'll take that follow-up, we'll take us right back into that customer. We've covered the three types of reminders, and then we have our two tabs for your communication logging. We've already kind of shown you what the call log can do, just a basic area for you to punch in a history of every time you chat with somebody. One really cool feature, if you pull out your mobile phone, you download our CRM app, you're actually gonna have call logging built into that. If you're an iOS user um, or an Android user, you can click on any phone number inside of our CRM mobile app. It'll open up your phone's native dialer, and when you complete the call, you're gonna see that the call log prompt is already open and waiting for you to type in notes afterwards. If you're an Android user, there's one additional piece of functionality which is every time you receive a phone call, it's gonna check that phone number against your CRM database. And if it recognizes that that phone number is related to like a lead or a contact, it's gonna automatically prompt you and ask you if you want to log the phone call against that contact. So that's one really cool feature. Another little hint is you can expect Ring Central integration coming out. No specific news for you yet, but you two are one of the first to hear that. Okay, so that's the call log. Then the last piece is the email. And this is a really big piece, because as we all know, almost everybody lives inside of their email uh, as far as doing business, especially salespeople. The way that our email integration works is it's not meant to replace your day-to-day -day reading of your inbox and replying to mails. It's meant to supplement that. So what it does is two things. One is it makes sending email out easier. I can, one, I'm already in here. A lot of time you're already gonna have Aptivo open. It already has your contact information. So if I need to send a quick message to Maxine here at Maxilon, it's very easy for me to do so right from this interface. So just sending email out is nice and handy a lot of the time. And then of course it gets logged into the system. But there is one other advantage of outbound email, which is we have a templating system built in. This template system builds right on top of that field customization that we saw earlier. So the idea is that you can go build email templates, but you can include fields into the template. So you'll see there, because we're sending this to the customer Maxilon, it's personalized with their company name, it pulls their phone number, their address. It can even pull values from custom fields. So we had that custom drop-down menu called building type, and it's able to say, well, yes, we had selected multi-tenant building for this particular customer. So you can actually send outbound email to single individuals like this, or up to 50 recipients at once, and it's gonna personalize that email for each recipient. So really cool feature, can save you a lot of time on the outbound email. The other thing that it does is your historical data tracking. So when you have the question of, what is the last thing that I said to this customer? Or even better, what is the last thing anybody in my organization said to this customer? Our system, it connects to any IMAP email account. So Aptivo actually acts as an email client. And what happens is we're constantly monitoring every email that you send out from your outside devices or from Aptivo, in addition to every email that you receive. And we're looking at these emails and we're saying, are these relevant to any of your CRM records? So what's happening is if you receive an email in your inbox, we're going to go and search the CRM database. If we see it's sent from Maxine Johnson 08 at Gmail or sent to her, then we're gonna automatically make it show up on this email tab right here. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to remember anything, just continue using your email like you're accustomed to. Aptiva will track the history for you. 
So when that day comes where somebody follows up with you, you haven't talked to them a year, and you need to quickly know the exact part of the last conversation you had, you come here, you can see the history of emails received by them, you can see the history of emails sent out to them, you get that full 360 degree view. So that's the email integration, a lot of people love that. Um, and then there's the last two features right here. Very basic, very essential. Notes, we saw earlier, simple threaded note system. Documents is a little different, where this is where we can store files. So a lot of times, um, certain types of businesses will need to take like photos of a job ahead of time. Maybe you have to sign a contract with every client that you work with. Um, maybe there's some other sorts of documentation and materials, like maybe you're a marketing agency and you need them to send their logo and branding materials to you. So in general, there's a lot of files that you're going to have to store relevant to deals or customers in general, or even like invoices and projects later on. But the idea is that we always like to store your files. You can either just upload from your computer into our system. Um, this is the only thing that we limit based on data storage. So one little note is we do like unlimited fields, unlimited contacts, unlimited opportunities. All that's completely unlimited. It's only limited by the files which you actually upload and store in our system. But we've also developed great documents integrations for you. So instead of duplicating your file and uploading it to our system, if you're using Google or Dropbox, we can actually search those databases in real time and then just add a link to that document inside of here. This will avoid any sort of use of um, data storage. So when you do on this, it just sticks the link in right there. And then when you click on it, it'll open up a new tab with the information inside of that database. So those are kind of the common features. Then the last two that we skipped, the 360 view and the news feed. These are all about, one is yes, they still help in just looking at like one particular customer account and getting history. But these are what really start to show the value of an integrated suite that goes beyond the CRM. So we saw the news feed. We were looking at the news feed of an opportunity earlier. And we saw that it told us when the opportunity was created and who had done changes to it and all that. But this news feed gets a little more powerful when you're looking at a customer. We discussed earlier that everything you're doing day to day in your business is related back to customers and contacts, whether they're sales deals, invoices, projects, um, everything like that relates back to the customer. So what we do in the customer news feed is we show every event somehow relevant to this customer account. So yes, we're going to see like the document we just added and the note we added a few moments ago, the call log. But as we scroll down further, well, now we can see that they, we recorded a payment against an invoice for them yesterday. We created an invoice for them yesterday. We see work order updates, estimate updates. Every single app update is going to get pushed in right here. So you have the perfect view where within one click, you can ask yourself, what is the last thing that my organization did with this customer? And you're going to be able to come to this page and get that information instantly. Based on that, I might see, okay, well, I've sent them an invoice recently. Then you might have additional questions like, well, can I check out the history of invoices I sent out to them? How much have I invoiced them over time? Or I remember sending them a quote last week, but how much did I actually quote them on that? Like what was on there? You have all these questions. And instead of normally like logging into a different system, like normally you have to go move over to your financial system to get the data, we have this 360 view. What this does is it allows you to go look into the other Aptivo apps and see information in real time. Mine's defaulted to show the estimates that I've sent out. But what you'll see is this is a drop-down menu. So it has each of the other apps it integrates with customers right here. So the common CRM functionality would be, okay, well, show me a list of past opportunities or show me a list of contacts at this organization. But then we have the other apps as well. So as we mentioned, we can get like a history of invoices. So here's every invoice ever sent to the customer. If you get into the help desk system, I can see all of their help desk tickets, although this customer has no help desk tickets. I can see estimates, I can do work orders. Every one of those apps is gonna pop up right here. So really when it comes down to it, one single customer profile in Aptivo gives you all your communication history, all of your internal notes and files about them, all the reminders you've done in the past, and every pr past transaction that you perform with the customer. It all starts right here, and that's really the power of the Aptivo CRM, is giving you all this integrated and aggregated information without having to go check 15 different systems for it. Okay, so what we've covered so far is the core collaboration features, meaning like how are you setting reminders and how are you storing your information inside of the system. One of the things we've covered a little bit about is um, what information you can store, so customizing the fields. 
We haven't spent much time on, let's say, pulling up a list of contacts based on some criteria, like maybe you want to go to perform a cold call against a certain segment of contacts from a, a certain region in a certain industry. There's lots of different ways you might want to chop your information apart to go take action on it. We also haven't talked much about, well, your actual sales process, like how to go through and manage these sales transactions. So let's spend a few moments and let's combine these together. Let's talk about a potential day in the life of a salesperson. Let's go look through our leads list. Let's go through, let's put together uh, a plan to call a segment of our leads. Let's find a lead who's interested, we'll convert them through, and we'll just kind of show you how the sales process works and how all these day-to-day -day interactions work in kind of a real-life scenario. So to begin, I'm going to work on the leads app. Let's say I don't have any sort of pending activities in my main agenda. I'm looking to just go take action. So I've come to my leads. Now, I know I want to go cold calling, but the question is, well, how do I pick the right leads to cold call right now? So I need to figure out a way to chop apart my information. Inside of each lead, let's just go ahead and pull up one example right here. We've actually got the Maxine Johnson. Um, she was the lead we'd initially used to convert into that customer we were looking at. And we can see down here we knew what number of employees they had, what territory they were in, and what rank they had. So why don't we do a search like this? Like, let's look for our high-ranked leads in the western U.S. With, uh, with 50 to 249 employees because we found success with this one. So let's go try to close more deals just like that. Now, every app will give you advanced search, cap um, advanced search capabilities, and you can search based on any field. This includes those custom fields you create. So right there, technical details. Um, I could filter by any of this criteria. So let's say that I also want to filter by people who have like Comcast internet. So we're going to select multiple pieces of criteria here. They have to be working on Comcast internet. They have to be located into the Western United States, and they have to have between 50 and 249 employees. So let's take that and then let's go run that search. And of course we have no matching data at all. So I probably should have checked my data set first. Let's just go ahead and simplify that search a little bit and get something that will for sure get data back. Okay, so let's just look for Comcast customers in the Western US. I think we'll get some information on that. If I can click my UI properly, I might be able to get it done. All right, third try is the charm. Comcast in the Western United States. I still have no leads. Okay, we're going to do a simple filter. We're just going to pick Comcast only. I guess I'm not too familiar with the test data I have in here. Maybe there's just literally nobody with Comcast. All right, so we're going to show you a couple other tricks. Hey, here we go. We just ran into a real-life problem. Well, I can't find the leads I'm looking for. How do I know that there's no leads in here that have Comcast Internet? So this is a great spot to demonstrate one of our features called the View Column Sets. So right here, I only see a first name, last name, company. Um, I want to be able to quickly browse to this list and see what internet service provider they have so I can determine if anybody has Comcast. What I can do is I can actually change these on the fly. So I need to make some room. I don't really care about who created these leads, but I am interested in which ISP they have. So I can add that in. Looks like I need a little more room, so maybe we remove like the status as well. Okay, perfect. So there I see my problem. I don't have the ISP filled in for any of these customers. So that would explain why I'm not able to filter and locate that group. But that's another perfect opportunity to demonstrate a common day-to-day -day thing. So I have a bunch of data. It's not correct. Sometimes you need to do mass corrections to your data. So if I'm running through this list and I want to start categorizing them, I mean, obviously this isn't too much of a real-life scenario because I'm not going to go blindly mark all these people of having Comcast Internet. But for the sake of this presentation, Let's say that I knew that these, um, these seven leads right here have Comcast Internet. For all my custom fields, I can also perform bulk modifications. So I go under there, I find my ISP field, and we can set each one of them to Comcast. Now that we've done that, we can successfully go and run our search and get our Comcast leads. There we go. Now we're making some progress. So now what we have is we have our search, so we've run only the Comcast leads. We've changed our columns so we can see like the internet service provider now. But then maybe we want to do this frequently. So maybe we're not going to finish all of our cold calls right now, and we want to come back to this over the next few weeks. Or maybe it's just something we're going to do ongoing. I can actually save this as a view for myself. So what I did was whenever, whenever I run a search, I get this Save as View button here. Really, really valuable for your day-to-day -day usage. So I call it Comcast leads. I can choose to share it with my colleagues or not. 
And then what happens is it puts a little shortcut for you. So over here in the left column, you'll see you've got like built-in filters by like the source of the lead and the territory, like your standard CRM type fields. But then we have my views. This shows all of your custom lists. So now within one click, I can always come back and this will rerun that search and it'll show you a fresh list of Comcast leads. So filtering the data is a big part of it. But then the other part is being able to quickly take action. So we're thinking about what are we trying to do here? We're going to go through this list and we want to cold call them. So in order to most efficiently cold call them, I need their phone numbers visible right here. Another great opportunity to use the view column sets feature. But this time, let's use one of the presets. So what you'll notice is before I just moved my mouse over here and I changed individual fields, um, which only applies to the current search that I'm doing. Meaning if I go click on all leads again, it's going to change it right back. My ISP is gone. But sometimes you want to have something that you can quickly apply to any set of data. So up here I have one called like contact info, for example. Yeah, there, I see a, the phone fax came through, like it changed the columns, but I still don't quite have what I need. These ones on top can actually be configured by your administrators. So I can go create a column set called cold calling, and the cold calling column set can have all the phone numbers that I need. So let's just go ahead and do that. Inside of the settings area, hop into view column sets, and then up here, I can actually create a brand new one. Drag it on up to the near the top, and we'll call this our cold calling. Now I get that same little drop down menu, so I can just pick and choose which fields that I want to add. So I'm basically just going to add each one of their phone numbers. And then maybe I go remove some of this extra info so I get more room. So I definitely still want the company so I know who I'm talking to and all that, but I don't need like closed date or anything like this. Okay, there we go. So oh, email, I'm also going to get rid of. All right, so you tweak it, you get a little preview of what it looks like inside of here, and now this is available to go apply to any search. So we can run right back into my views, Comcast leads. Okay, so I've got my list of Comcast leads, and the action I want to take is I want to cold call them. Let me apply my cold calling tab. Instantly, I have every phone number available within one glance. Now, as far as running through these, let me show you how you can quickly perform actions, because a lot of time you're going to go through like five or six records at once. You're going to Try to call them, lug the phone call, put in a follow-up for next time, take a note, move on to the next one. Rinse, lather, repeat. So for that, click on the first one. Pulls out our side panel. So this actually shows all of the fields that are present on the overview tab. Um, and it also gives us a list of quick actions up on the top of the page. These are pretty much equivalent to each of the tabs that we would see. So if we uh, click on these three dots, we'll get back into that full view. And you can see the tabs across the top of the page. Basically, the full view allows you, allows you to view the, the past notes and the past documents and past phone calls. But from that little side panel view, I'm able to just insert a new task or a new follow-up. So the flow here is, okay, I get my cold calling set, click on my first one, give them a phone call. First thing I do, I log the phone call. Okay, they didn't pick up, so I want to try call them again tomorrow. So easy as that. I just log the phone call. I put in my reminder for next time. I click on the next one, and then we can move on. So now I have their phone number. I give them a phone call. I take down the notes. I mean, maybe I get connected with them. Maybe I actually need to take down some notes. So maybe this one wasn't, it's not a deal on the table. It's something that's going to happen later on. They said, give me a call back in six months. So then maybe I need to come in here, I need to go update the information I have, and say, okay, estimated close date, it's probably going to be more like September. And then I could go put a follow-up in for like September 1st to, to contact them then. So yeah, I would pretty much be moving through, going and following up with all these different sales leads. And let's just say that one of them is interested in our services. So just to kind of give some context here, um, let's just say that this example flow, we're selling websites. So we're going to do website design for them. So I give them a call. And maybe we got a meeting right away. So what you'll end up doing is I'm going to want to log the phone call, but then 
if I'm ready to move on to the next stage of this deal, the general rule of thumb is you always update with your most recent information before moving on to the next stage. So if I know the, the title of the person I'm working with, if I know any information about where they came from or anything like that, I can update it here. And then I'm going to get to the point where I can move on to the next stage. So for that, you'll always look in the upper right corner. You're going to see a button called Convert, and I click on that. What this is going to do is it's going to preview. So the idea is that from this lead, we're going to create a contact, a customer, and an opportunity all at once. The contact and customer become those reusable reference objects that we attach everything to. The opportunity represents this specific website redesign deal. So we hit Start Conversion, but then the idea here is you shouldn't have to change any information. All the details should just be copied on in, all of our phone numbers and everything, they're popped right in there. This includes your custom fields if you've had them selected. And we can move on to the next stage. So basically just kind of double checking your data, saying OK, and then hitting that Convert button to move on. Contacting customer, you very rarely change. And then when we get to the opportunity, we're going to need to punch in a couple de details about it. So this is, um, say, A and S. They need a new website. I'll put the stage that it's in, so I'm currently still qualifying them, how likely it is to close, when I think this is going to close, then all this information is used for the projection. So let's say this is probably worth like 10000 So I can put that, that information. You have all your other fields here. Then I go ahead and hit Create. Okay, so at this point, we're still looking at the lead. It's marked as converted. It's basically archived for later on but we should be able to hop over to the Opportunities app and take a look from this perspective. So the default view on Opportunities, you'll notice is this graphical pipeline breakdown. Um, it's designed where it definitely gives you a little bit more granular focus in on the actual financial details related to each deal. Every company is different. Not every company really cares about how much deal um, or how much money each deal is worth. They're more so interested in just getting the basic follow-up tracking. Some people are very interested in doing like quota management and ensuring the sales reps are producing against their goals. Definitely Optivo can be configured for either one of those purposes. But here we have our opportunity in this list. See that little side panel if we want to take quick action, but let's go dive in, take a look at the whole thing. Looks pretty much identical to the lead, and the activities that we're doing are pretty much identical to the lead as well. So it's really just a matter of calling them, emailing them, putting in the follow-ups, updating our information here, and eventually you get to the point where you can close this deal. So we're moving through our stages and all that. Okay, we get to the value prop, we get to sending out an estimate. This is where we move beyond the opportunities app in Aptivo, is it doesn't just stop at the potential sale. So if I need to do a quote, let's say that we have that item integration we talked about earlier. Let's say if I'm adding items onto this opportunity before I move to the quote. So okay, I've got graphic design, one hour and web development one hour. So let's just say I estimate 10 of those. So the salesperson can be tracking what they've promised so far to the client. And then the idea is when I move on to that official quote, it should once again copy all my information. So here I can convert this opportunity to an estimate, takes us into the financial apps. It's gonna copy the same customer contact from the CRM as we saw earlier, so just references them. And then down here we see those products pop up. Of course, I can modify any pricing, I can apply tax codes, and there's some special features here like payment terms and discounting and such. But then this whole estimate can actually be emailed right out to the customer. So right there, I email it out, they get like a nice PDF copy, everything like that. They can actually approve it online. And then the estimate itself is taken to the next stage if, if you have those available. So I can invoice the customer from here, I can go launch a project, etc. But the idea is throughout this whole process, like let's say if I invoice for them, everything is tracked back against the same exact customer and contact. So as I'm coming through, I'm doing all these updates. Um, what you're gonna see is we start to build out that 360 view that we saw earlier for our example customer. So from any data point, let's say if you're an accountant or if you're an engineer or if you're a salesperson, everything you work on should have a link back to like the customer you're working with. Everybody should be able to go here and then see all the different activities that are going on throughout the whole company. So once again, we click that news feed, and now we see instantly those updates. So we started off, we created a new customer from a sales lead. We also generated a contact and an opportunity. We took that opportunity, we converted it into an estimate, and then we turned it into an invoice and got paid. So this is kind of the end of the presentation for today. Um, 
I hope you all found it to be quite beneficial. Uh, Aptivo CRM is just kind of a small piece. If you want more help moving forward on this particular area, we've actually just released a brand new website, has some great new help materials in here. So I certainly recommend checking out the help section of the website. You have a general knowledge base here where you can search on specific topics, but you're also going to see that there's a user manual built in now. So you can actually hop in here, you get a breakdown of the different types of solutions we offer, and then when you say, okay, well, I know I'm interested in CRM, we have a documentation area. So now I can get a recap on what those CRM apps are. I can click on these and get all the details about the, the actual functionality in the apps. So I hope you all found this to be quite beneficial. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put my microphone on mute now. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll hang around for just another minute or two, and I'll be happy to guide you through anything further. So once again, thanks for joining, and hope you all have a great day.